Hello and welcome back to Panamic Playground with Dave. We are back with the mobile base, Hovercraft, Mommycraft, and today's goal is to create a ramp to collect the small skimmer, small grid skimmer, and gather more resources, but with the build and repair system. Alright, so we have two main goals in mind today, and let's see how all that turned out.
All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. Here is the context of today's episode. So, of course, first things first, we had to build somewhat of a ramp system so we can bring up this skimmer, the smoker skimmer, and bring it back down and everything like that because I didn't want to leave it there on the ground and control two ships in that sense. I could technically turn this into a drone sooner or later so I could follow the mummy craft. This be this will be childcraft, <laughs> if anything. Um, but the ramp system, somewhat of several iterations of it, that was a bit of a failure. The first one being the hinge system with the panels here, and that kind of worked. But the tail end here was a little bit too long and didn't really fit the ship or craft itself that well. So I decided to go with a piston version of it. And when I went to a piston version of it, I used one piston at first. Well, I used two pistons, but one vertical piston, right? So one on this side, one on that side. And that worked out okay, but it was a little bit too short by one or two blocks. So had to change it once again. And now ultimately we ended up with this one, which is a two piston vertical system. This one has a minimum distance that I can retract right here. So it lines up the line almost perfectly right there. So that was the point for that. The only issue that I run into is if you're not on a flat ground like where I am now, this bot hits the ground first way before this end does. So that's why I had to cut, put a little bit of a slant here, which is a good thing and also a bad thing. The good thing, it does help bring up the ship um, with the slant. But the problem is if we bring too low, it's going to break. And you saw in the time lapse, that we broke this thing several times before we got to really really work out okay but all in all right now is a working system and it's a simple simple system we just extend the piston here and it should go fairly low but not too low to the point where it's going to break so that's almost perfect right now and it's easy to walk right into it and walk out into it the only problem i have here is i didn't add a button here which i should add a button down here so that we can bring it back up now, I'm curious if I can add a button right over here. All right, so adding a button right over here, which is the same exactly where we have it up top. See if that kind of works out. All right, so we can retract it from here, which is great. And the button should line up. I'm not sure if it's going to light here oh no goes right through it perfect and it lines it up back to back so that actually looks pretty good not too bad probably should add on this side so i have more space for the vehicle but this should do okay but another iteration i could probably do is, is bring this back up all the way to the top put a hinge right over here and when we get close to the ground we can make it a bit of a ramp. So that way we can lower it slowly so it don't break as easily. But this system should do as it is right now. And it fits the skimmer pretty nicely as well. But I, yeah, this is a little bit on the sketchy side. So it's likely going to break again if we're on a, a more rocky, rocky area or whatever the case is. I, I think I lowered... Yeah, I lowered the, the impulses a little bit so that we can be very careful of it, of not breaking or hitting the ground too hard and pushing it. But I'm pretty sure it's going to break once again. <laughs> so let's just cross our fingers for now and move on from there. And of course, in order to add this ramp system, we had to move our power system, which is our turbines. We did the turbines and the braking system by putting a magnetic plate on the bottom here attached to this steel plate or this armor block and then we brought it all the way up here and of course it's a little bit too short which we're not gathering a lot of power from this one this one and this one because it's not high enough um, away from these grids here or these these blocks so that is a bit of a problem and we're not gathering as much power i should really bring this a little bit higher but the only problem when i, when I bring it too high is is that when I don't have it parked, this thing is pretty, pretty high up, which is a little bit scary for making it kind of top heavy in that sense. But although it's not really that heavy anyways, so it should be okay. Just going to look a little bit 
ugly. <laughs> so, other than that, that's all I've done with the mommy craft so far. We're gonna have to start putting the interior together, or at least the shelf um, together. A lot of this is probably gonna move. This was just for uh, moving the platform as we gather more resources, because we needed to move from where we were initially. So then that way we could gather more cobalt, ice, and everything else um, easily. And in terms of gathering resources, we did a bit of a, I kind of want to say cheesy in a, in a sense, but a, a more of a mining system where we don't need a cargo container. We don't need to connect into it or, or dump into our um, hovercraft and things like that. So it is a bit cheesy, but we are gathering with build and repair. If we had it otherwise, it will be a little bit more difficult to gather stuff um, because this thing is not very mobile, <laughs> as you've seen. So it is what it is. I'm using build and repair anyways. Might as well utilize the ore gathering aspect of it as well. And in terms of the ore gathering, it is basically a quick mining system. One drill attaching a hinge and rotor on a custom turret controller. So we can utilize different motions of the arm for the drill arm. And we've connected into these connectors here. So the connectors themselves are going to dump, collect and dump all the ores and drop it into a little bit of a basket here. And with the bunch of ore dropped here in a basket, our build and repair will start collecting it into our car containers. So that's why we have a decent amount of stone, cobalt, and ice right this moment. It looks like we're running low on ice once again, but we can always gather a lot more down the line by getting back to our ice mining area. Right, so our building repair is actually repairing, or not repairing, but welding up the windows here. I kind of didn't want it to be welded up, but it's okay. <laughs> not a huge loss. Um, we are losing silicon, but we gather a bunch from the stone here anyways. So the mining system we used early, early on, and it's the same thing here. Go to custom turret controller so we can utilize up motion, left, right motion, and down motion with the mining arm or the drill. So that way we can gather more material, more materials, ores, and everything like that much easier without having multiple drill arms or drill heads and things like that. So this one specifically. Um, in order for the, the, the ores to not drop out of the basket, although it doesn't matter if it drops out of the basket or not, because building repair is going to pick it up regardless. But if we want to be careful with the, if we don't want it to spill out to make it look bad, we got to drop the drill, no, the piston down this way first, and then we drop the other ones um, next. So we gather a small amount at a time, really. So it's a bit slow, but it works out pretty well, in some cases. So now we'll drop down the drill arms, piston, and then we'll drop the next one. So it's, it's really three, it's kind of like three pistons deep, which is more than enough for most things. Cobalt here was about 30 meters down. And having three was enough to reach there, so it's perfect. Well, each, each piston extends 10 meters, as we know. So having three of them would be dirty, so it's almost perfect. Right, so I think it's time to drop the next one, and that's what you see how we're dropping here. And we just leave the turret controller as is, so that it can just slowly get down and, and drill for what we need. And we also have an ice miner, and that is... Back in our old destination, right over there, three kilometers away. So let's just travel there really quickly as well. Um, this system, in terms of holding our skimmer... We didn't do a connector because the connector is a little bit off. So we decided not to go with the connector. It, off in terms of height. So we just went with the magnetic plate stuck onto it. Not the best idea in the world, but it, it's not it's not terrible. <laughs> it works. That's what matters. But anyways. We can release this thing right here. It's not an auto lock, so it's not gonna lock back in, which is good. And we can just drive this thing towards our ramp system that we made and we can just be right over there we can spin it around to have more more width on the ramp but it's not necessary 
it would be nice to put this as a sensor and or an antenna so then that way we can remote into it or at least a remote control not necessarily an antenna so the ram system is going to drop it down and as you see here we don't really have too much power left on this thing which is uh which is not great but it should be okay so we can skim off of the ramp right there and we can head back towards our base our original base of operations i should say so I'm gonna turn dampeners off and go full speed basically if we can and that should reduce our usage of power from the thrusters up front so that is not being used right now until I um, turn back on the dampeners. But we're, we're floating back towards our original point and that's basically where our ice miner is at. Right over there, you see it? Right in front of us, it's a little bit of a blue thing. So let's slow this thing down a little bit, turn on the dampeners. And turn it back off just to glide a little bit slower. I'm just trying to save power. <laughs> so we're going to do it this way. Let's see here. This is the Oasis as we've seen in previous episodes. This is the holes here. It's not meteors. It was me dropping ramps. <laughs> and here is our nifty little ice mining spot. Which is the same thing as we had it for the Cobalt. Uh, we just colored it in blue so it stands out more. And of course I GPS marker this thing as the ice miner so the ice miner same aspect it's got a better basket though it's got a little bit of ramp system here it is three piston height tall as well so it's nothing's changed there and it's exactly the same system where we can utilize i should probably group the two bars the same but we can utilize the drill system kind of the same way as what we had with the cobalt so here we can I think since we don't have building we don't have the whole ship with us for building repair I just need some ice for my current ship uh, for, for the small skimmer so what I'm gonna do is probably not do the throw out let's just keep it in the drills and I'll just gather some some ice for the time being and then transfer it into the small skimmer as much as possible and then when we come back to get more ice when we need to i will release and throw out all the stuff that's there that we've collected so i think we can hold a decent amount in here the three connectors can hold ice and stone and so can the drill system itself although it looks like i, I pretty much completely missed the ice it looks like <laughs> so that's that's not fun yeah i pretty much missed the ice so what we can do here is basically turn it on and we can bring it up just a tiny bit and I think that's enough where we can just drop it down slightly just to gather a little bit more as well which is oh I don't know why it turns off the drill there we go so here we're gathering that was a little dangerous we could have popped it and broke it <laughs> but luckily we saved it just in time and we're able to gather most of the ice right over here. And that should fill up our connectors here. Yes, it looks like about all done. But look at all that leaders here in the drill itself. So it's it's not too, too bad in terms of storage with and without um, a, a cargo container, basically. Although we can still put a cargo here and throw it out once we get close. That's also a thing. I mean, we could probably and should probably automate these things. All right, so we got a decent amount of ice. So I'm gonna, just going to start dumping it in our system. And I think I just filled up our whole entire system. Looks like we have a lot of junk in here. So we can't hold too much. We have this medium cargo container that is... Hmm. I'm just going to grab some of that and load it in here for now can i i can't so i'm not sure if i can make a medium car container might not have all the parts i have motors with me in this i think i saw displays oddly enough yep <laughs> there's some displays here 
And okay, so we have motors also. So, huh? <laughs> Do we have like perfect amounts of materials for this? All right, let's put the medium car container right over here. And if I could gather the rest of the materials, that'd be great. And we're off by one interior plate. Great. <laughs> that That is like fantastic. Just one we're missing. How is that even possible? <laughs> that's fine. Because we can always grab an interior plate from something that's over welded. Not over welded, but welded to, to the maximum point. We can grab from the uh, other medium car container. Right there. So then we have two this way. Okay, so that's extra space, so we can throw our materials in there if we have to. Well, let me gather what we can and throw it into the seat, because I can't use ice in the seat anyways. And I think that should be it. I'm going to grab the rest of the ice and kind of be on my way. So we'll just leave this here, and this thing is powered by one turbine, so it's more than enough. To just sustain itself while it's doing nothing. <laughs> so we should be more than okay. Okay. So if we were to drive this thing back to the main craft. Mommy craft. Mother craft. We can easily do that. Again, turn off dampeners. Just save some power. So you see here. Two more minutes left. 31 minutes by releasing everything. And now I'm just floating basically. So this kind of works out to have a skimmer. Don't you waste a lot less power this way? All right, so easy ramp right there. Didn't have to go too, too crazy with it. And now I have the button here, so we can just easily press that and bring it up towards the magnetic plate. And it doesn't even matter if we're forward this way or backwards. We're just going to mag plate it into it. And then we can trans transfer out the hovercraft. Okay, we have a problem. And I don't know if it's this thing or the piston. No, I think it's the piston's torque. I, I lowered it to a point. So I think the hovercraft is a little bit too heavy for it. That's my guess. It worked fine without it. But we can slowly work this thing out by extending it and retracting it. And it looks like we're doing okay. I just like how this matches up perfectly. <laughs> but we are good. So we can just bring this thing back. And let's not spin it and just crash right into the front of it. Well, not crash, but place it in front of it. And then lock on. And we're good to go. So we have spare ice, so we can always throw it into our system if we had to. Um, for it to power up. The, like I said before, I released this thing way, way too early um, from the system for the turbines to charge up all the batteries. So we, we are really relying on the ice right, right now. Right, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Hovercraft Mobile Base. If you did, you guys know what to do. And of course, that would be to hit that thumbs up, like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.